Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over some uh, database terminology. So, over this term, over the next 10 weeks, I'm going to be working with you on using access in order to create and manage databases. So I want to go ahead and get us started with some terms that you're going to hear over and over again. So I've got access started up, and I do have a, uh, a database loaded in here that has a number of things, a number of uh, objects. And I want to kind of keep us straight on this, and, and, and not necessarily in any particular order. But let me go ahead and open up one of these tables here. In fact, I might as well start there with the word table. So, so a table is a pretty important part of any database. In fact, you can't have a database without at least one table. And in real life, your database is likely going to be made up of multiple tables. So this particular database has a client's employees jobs log and tasks tables. Now whenever you use multiple tables these tables are going to be related to each other and you're going to use a relational database management system or an RDBMS, a relational database management system which is basically the program we're using in order to manage this relational database. Uh, so a table is one collection of data, uh, one collection of records on a particular group. In this case, I have a client's table, for instance. Their tables have a few names, by the way, also known as a entity. A table can be called an entity, or you might even sometimes hear it referred to as a relation. Now, I'm not teaching a, a formal database theory and design class but you really can't use any database system without knowing some basics about database design and theory. So although I'll tend to use the word table most of the time, you might also read references where they're referred to as entities or relations. And sometimes you'll hear of an ERD or an entity relationship diagram. Well, it's basically a table relationship diagram and I'll show you something like that in just a second. So our database is made up of tables and we're using our relational database management system to organize it and to work with it. Let me go and open up my clients table real quick. And my clients table in this particular view, this is called data sheet view and access, it looks pretty much just like an Excel spreadsheet. So if you're an Excel user then you should be very familiar with this kind of interface. And each of my columns are labeled. Now these columns are fields. Okay? And a field is a unique piece of information about a person, place, or thing. So I've got my client's ID, I've got their name, phone number, and address. Sometimes you might hear these referred to as attributes. Okay, a field or an attribute. In a more formal database course, they'd probably refer to them as attributes most of the time. Um, I'm going to refer to them as fields. That's the more common name. So my table is made up of various rows of data. Each row of data, by the way, is a record, also known as a row, or sometimes, I don't know if you'll ever hear this one, a tuple. Um, I'm going to call them records because that's the term we hear about most of the time. So a record is a row of one person, place, or thing. So if I look at Canon and Alexander here, this one row, I have the ID for that particular client, I have the name for that client, their phone number, their address. So if you could imagine a database at your school, each row or record would be information about one student. If it was the Department of Motor Vehicles, each row or record would be on one driver. And um, so each row is a record. And of course, where the field in the row intersect is one piece of data. Now fields sometimes have special categories and they're called keys or special identifier. And some keys are more important than others, some fields. So look at this one field right here, client ID. This particular field is called a primary key. Okay. The primary key field is a special field and it basically it guarantees uniqueness for each record and an ID number is almost always what's used as a primary key. So your driver's license number is a primary key. Um, 
because that uniquely identifies each record. Uh, your student ID would be your primary key. Your social security number is a primary key in some database. And basically that helps ensure uniqueness. It's possible you could have two people with the same name, same address, same phone number, the same a lot of stuff, but you can't have two people with the same ID. I can't have two clients with the same client ID. So client ID is my primary key. And that's pretty much where, where I'm going to leave it for this class. Now, once again, in a more formal database theory course, um, you might hear some other terms, um, non-keys or candidate keys or composite keys. And these are different slight variations of field names that we don't really need to concern ourselves too much. A composite key, composite key isn't necessarily a complicated thing. A composite key might be a primary key that's made up of more than one field. Some databases do that. Um, I will probably not demonstrate that too much in this course though. My primary keys will generally be one field and there'll be something unique like it. And the, the word ID will usually be incorporated into it. But a primary key could be made up of multiple fields. For instance, it could be made up of uh, a date and a name together become primary key. And that would be a composite key. It's made up of two parts. But knowing that our primary key is a unique field is pretty good. Let me jump over here to my view, change this over to design view, and you'll see it in here. These are all the fields in my client table. And you can tell that my client ID has been given primary key status. If I click on it, I can turn it on or off as a primary key, and I can't modify it at the moment. But um, So I have my one primary key. And I'm going to stick with one primary key per table. Every table, by the way, will have multiple fields, and one of those fields will be a primary key. So I've got multiple tables here, clients, employees, jobs, logs, and tasks. Let's look at the relationship between these. So I'm going to jump over to database tools and relationships. And you can see how these four tables are related to each other. And if you're using a relational database management system and you're using uh, multiple tables, and you certainly would be, there's not a lot of value to having just one table, then these tables need to have relationships established. And that's what I've got here. And you can see these established, these relationship lines right in here. The bold black lines, the little one symbol, and the little infinity symbol, which means many. So I've got four tables all related, and I'm using one to many relationships one to many, one to many, one to many relationships. This is extremely normal. And it's going to make a little bit more sense as we move along, but this is a very common relationship. There's also many to many and one to one, but you're going to see me using lots of one to many relationships. In fact, if there's a situation where there is a many to many relationship, and by the way, this is one, one employee can complete many tasks. One task can be completed by many employees. Well, that's a many-to-many -many relationship. I'm using the jobs log table to break that many-to-many -many relationship up into two one-to-many relationships, to multiple one-to-many relationships. Same thing here between employees and clients. One employee can work with many clients. One client can be serviced by many employees. That's a many-to-many -many relationship. So I'm using the jobs log table to break that up. Um, this jobs log table uh, has a number of different names. Uh, uh, one is called an associative entity. Uh, member entity is another word for table. Um, I, I use in class, I use the term junction table quite a bit. It's basically, it's a table used, it does have unique information in it, unique fields, but it's a table used in order to help connect two other tables that had a many-to-many -many relationship. And we'll do this multiple times. Some of the first little databases we create in this class are going to be um, just two tables. You know, those are good ones to start with. And then you'll quickly find out that a third table is often necessary to break up or resolve a many-to-many -many relationship scenario. So I've got these relationship lines set up and they let me know the style of relationship one-to-many. I've also got referential integrity enforced and I'll talk more about that pretty soon but I do that all the time. Referential integrity is enforced which means for instance if I was going to enter in a new job log you know let's say there was some some new job performed 
Since I have referential integrity enforced, I can't refer to an employee ID if that employee does not already exist in the employees table. And I can't refer to a client ID unless that client already exists in the clients table. So by having referential integrity turned on, enforced turned on, I'm making sure that my data is as valid as possible. I don't want to refer to a client if that client doesn't exist, and I don't want to refer to an employee if that employee doesn't exist. If I didn't have referential integrity turned on, let me show you this real quick. I'll just right click on one of these relationship lines. I'll go to edit relationship. Now if I didn't have this little check mark checked, the relationship is still there, but it would be possible for me right now to create a new job log and refer to some employee ID even if that employee didn't exist. I don't like that idea a lot. So I'm going to right click edit relationship and make sure referential integrity is enforced. And I'll talk about cascading related fields later on. But check that little box, click OK, there we go. So this is the relationship for my database, for the tables within my database. I'll go ahead and close that. Now in a, um, in a formal database theory class, you'd hear the term normalization a lot. And I'll use that term from time to time, but I'm not going to use it a lot. Um, normalization is basically the process of making tables, additional tables, in order to minimize redundancy. And I'll mention this here in another video, but you could, in theory, create a database using just one massive table. And I could have my client information, my employee information, my jobs log, all mixed in with one table. But it would require a lot of redundancy. It would be a lot of waste. It would be inefficient. And there would be lots of opportunities for mistakes. So by taking this one massive table database and splitting it up into four tables, I have reduced redundancy. Therefore, I've performed some level of normalization. And, um, and in, a, in a database course, you go into different forms, first, second, normal, uh, third normal forms of, of normalization. Not a concern for us here, though. But um, we do want to use enough tables in order to minimize redundancy. We won't eliminate redundancy, because there's going to be a trade-off point. We don't want to make so many tables that man maintaining our database now is a headache and or, or an extra cost. We want just enough tables to keep things neat and organized and running smoothly. Not too few, not too many. Now in Access here, I've got a few other objects which we'll spend some time with in other classes, but in addition to my tables, I've got some queries, and a query is basically just a fancy word for search. Perform different queries on our data. Forms, which is basically used for data entry and data updating. And reports, which is the finished display of data. So if I were to display a report, we can see uh, this in this example a, uh, a column chart where I can display another report that shows some basic data calculations. So we'll make sure we know how to make these various kinds of reports, forms, queries, and tables. So this is just a little bit of our, our database terminology. While I'm here in Access, you'll notice that the ribbon is relatively familiar to you if you've been using uh, any uh, Microsoft Office programs. It'll take a little bit of exploring, but there's not a lot of choices, which means it'll be a relatively easy review. And uh, But certainly, we will get good at this, and we're going to make multiple databases, and we'll use a lot of these features up here, and you'll learn how to make and maintain them. So there's a little bit for uh, terminology. Let's throw my terms back up. I've got uh, tables, entities, relations, relations, relational database management system. Of course, we can use uh, entity relationship diagrams. Okay. In order to manage how the tables are related, and we can see the one-to-ones and the one-to-many relationships. Um, of course, we're keeping track of our fields, we're keeping track of our records, and we're also making sure that we always have a primary key for every table in our database. Now, there's other terms I'll be throwing out at you, too, but these are good ones to start with for our database. So, start to make sure you have uh, access available to you, and study up on some of these terms, and start to explore a little bit of the access interface. Talk to you soon.